Hey fellas, a lot of you have been asking me, where do I get BTDX? What is it? How do I install it? Who should I get it from? Well, I'm going to be answering all those questions today and giving you an overview of the game. The first me to find the game, it's made by a man named Rama, and he has a website that we can get BTDX from. This top vlog spot one's old, not the new one. We get a little button to download. It takes you to a Google Drive link. Then it'll scream at you because Google Drive is a useless product that doesn't know how to scan anything. And we can get ourselves a BTDX. The link should also be in the description to get here. Once that's finished going, we get told off. It's like, hey, you're trying to install something. It's like, yes, I think we all know we're trying to install something. Press agree. Um, I prefer having a desktop shortcut over a start menu shortcut. It's preference. You know, press next. And it goes. Um, everything's packaged internally, so there's no downloading. The installer just unpacks it for you, and it's ready to go. One button, game's open. It's that simple, really. Okay, look at the actual game. I've loaded up my main save. We'll start with the towers. So we have the Dart Monkey first, and the upgrades. We have a tank, which is interesting. I think it's a temporary Dartling Gun style effect. Uh, not the normal Dartling Gun. There's an upgrade. This will be very similar to. We'll get to it much later. We have the Spiker Pult, which does not have an Ultra Juggernaut like in BT6. It's just a plain Juggernaut. And the Button Path, with triple darts, six darts per throw. And then we have the Fan Club, which does quite a lot of Dart Monkeys. You get it in a nice position. And then the Alt Path, which you get from doing quests. So each tower has a hidden fourth path. And you can get a, dart, a minigun with spike balls. And the way these paths work is different as well. You have two initial upgrades, and then three initially, and then later once you've done the quests, four paths per tower. It's the same starting to upgrades for all of the paths. So if I had this minigun and a tank, they'd have the same first two upgrades. There are no cross paths. Um, so that's a big chain from BTD6. And we can look at Tack, Maelstorm, Ring of Fire, Tack Typhoon. This middle path is incredibly useful. And so is the bottom path. And then the alt path is a bit of a meme with fireworks. Which is uh, not useful at all. We move on to Boomerang. We have our little throwback to BTD4. Plasma Boomerangs again. We have Ricochet, which is just very bizarre. It does not bounce off of the balloons, it bounces off of the walls. Which is um, not very useful. It's like that Ultra Juggernaut. You know, it bounces off the terrain and stuff. Then we have the Turbocharge line, which works exactly how you think it's an ability. Um, and then alt path is like Jedi tricks with the boomerang thing. It takes the joke the whole way. A little Star Wars reference. And then we want the snipers. Um, this is where we get a bit weird because there are no deliberate targeting options. The sniper is pretty much useless because you can't get these dudes to actually aim at anything. They always just hit the first balloon, which can make them waste a lot of their damage. Uh, but upgrades wise, we have the RPG Strike ability, which comes off of that bazooka. And there is no upgrade to the actual tower with this one, it's just a very big ability. We have the Cripple Moab, which doesn't provide any bonus damage, but it's a lot cheaper than BTD6's one. And then we have the Supply Drop line again. Um, there are, oh, there's only one version, it's only the fifth tier that gets the ability on this, which is something very typical of BTD6. If you've worked out the theme, the top and bottom paths always have abilities on them, and then the middle path doesn't. And we have an alt path, and this one breaks the trend, it's on the top path this time. It's an upgraded bazooka. Um, and instead of getting an ability, it gets a railgun, which is very, very, very strong. And then we've got the ninja. We have our distraction path. It doesn't get to distract Moabs, which is a little bit sad, but it's also very cheap. 
Um, and it doesn't work like Sabo does, it just bounces the balloons backwards. For our middle path, you have Bloom Jitsu. Um, it basically just goes super fast. It's not particularly interesting. And then the bottom path gives him a sword, which is quite fun. A little bit of short range chaos with this one. And the alt path is also on the bottom. So it just it's just a stronger version of the normal one. Then we can move on to Bomb. The understandable bomb path that goes for Moabs. Um, I don't think this is particularly useful. Same issue as with Sniper, you can't target it to hit Moabs, so it's going to waste most of its damage. Middle path, it's Cluster again. Um, clusters work very differently in this, they don't tend to stack on the same balloons. This path is not very strong. And then we have the bottom path, which is Pineapples, which turns it into a Charge Tower, and this is incredibly strong. Um, pineapple spam is definitely a thing. And then we have the giant pineapple, which is sort of like a ground zero, although it's a bit of a budget version. And the alt path is on the bottom, it's completely different though. It turns its projectiles into little, almost shuriken-like things that get shot forward, and it just gets more of them. It becomes more ridiculous with each upgrade. Then we've got a sub. So sub is pretty much just what you'd expect. The upgrades are almost the same as BTD6. So we have a path for the darts. So you get your air burst, you then get more air burst. And then we have an ability that is sort of... It's, it's like Legend of the Night, really. You just press a button and the balloons can't leak. But it's not passive, it's active, so you have to click it. We have Submerge Sub, and we get two reactor upgrades. Um, so instead of giving an ability cooldown reduction, it heals stun, which is a thing that will be relevant for some of the boss encounters. But it's very overpriced, in my opinion. And then we have the long range one. Um, we don't get the shared range upgrades from Advanced Intel. Instead, it's just the missile path has torpedoes that have a lot of range. We have the missile, which again is just range. And then we have First Strike, which is, I believe, exactly the same as it is in BTD5. I don't think it's changed at all. Just fires at the biggest balloon, does a ton of damage. And then the top path, the top path is very odd. So instead of advanced intel, the alt path sends the darts to your cursor. So you get to pick where the darts go. Which is very interesting. And then we arrive at the charge tower. This is... It's halfway between a normal tower and a spat tree. It builds up shots over time and then shoots them. It's very slow if you put it at the front, but if you let it build up, the shots it releases are very quick. So the upgrades are based on charge. The top path is just basically the normal tower function getting stronger. The middle path turns it into a big bomb. And the bottom path give it, turns its little balls into a laser instead. Becomes a laser pen, basically. And the two abilities, so the way this one works is it just has a, like its normal charge, it then gets an extra shell with a ton of shots on it. And then the bottom path is just an orb that it fires out. And the alt path, um, instead of getting an ability, it just makes the charge mechanic even more ridiculous. So it's shots that release shots. Like a cluster ball sort of thing. We're on at glue. So we have the striker in the back. Um, and this path, due to the way shields work, is pretty dunced. Um, glue is not very good in this game. Because shields stop balloons from getting glued. Which is a big problem. Um, middle path is a dissolver, which gets to hit Moabs, which is a nice change. Um, but it's not very good. <laughs> Which is a bit of a trend. And the bottom path turns it into a spike factory, which is very interesting. And then we get an ability that can hit Moab, so we get our Moab glue. It's only an ability though. And then we have an upgraded middle path, it's just stronger. Stronger um, dissolving. And the last here also hits Moabs, and it does quite a lot more damage. It's very expensive. And then we have ice. So ice and the original snowball cannon. The idea did not come from BTD6, it came from this. Because this game came out beforehand. We have our original snowball thrower. 
which gets flaming snowballs, which makes no sense. Middle path is your Arctic Wind, and then we get Absolute Zero, which is not an ability, which is very unusual. And then the bottom path is the Shatter, it's very much like BTC5's Ice Shards abilities. And they get a temporary storm that hits everything and makes shards everywhere. Alt path turns it into a wizard for some reason. It's like a wizard with the uh, tempest tornado thing. They write boat. So boat gets to summon towers, which is fun. Temporary towers, like the engineer does. So it gets a little infantry. And then the ability gives them a temporary overcharge. The middle path is just your destroyer, which becomes an aircraft carrier. And the bottom path is a cannon ship, which obviously gets taken down. The alt path is interesting. It's just an upgrade to the top path. It's also more expensive though. It's spooky ship. The engineer does what you'd expect. It's got its path for sentries, and its default upgrades are sentries as well. And all of the upgrades are related to its sentries this time. So we've got ones that break shields, which are very interesting. A middle path that makes them shoot quicker, and a bottom path that provides foam. And also the balloon trap. And the alt path allows its sentries to fly around, which is very interesting and useful. And we have Ace. So Ace, we have the Never Miss path again, which does eventually become the Spectre. The top path is very unique. It's like the Wing Monkey from BTD6. Sort of chase things around. And then you have an ability that spawns a sort of like a super monkey storm worth of aces. And then the bottom path, ground zero with the ODS. Sort of like the original. And then the alt path is the same thing again, but no ability. Instead, it gains a very, very, very strange screen sized explosive that hits everything constantly for a little bit of damage, which is very good. And then we get to the funny meme tower, we have the balloon chipper. I hate that this isn't in BTD6, just like to point that out. Everyone wants this thing back. But anyway, pass. So you can make money, you can then throw the money back at the balloons. So you can throw little bits of rubber at them and you upset them. And then the vampire, which is just it's like an overcharge. The middle path is for Moabs. And then the bottom path is for sucking up lots and lots of balloons, including the infamous super vac. You can pull all the balloons to it. And the alt path, the alt path is very bizarre. It inverts the towers instead of sucking balloons in, it chucks things out, which basically just makes it a normal tower. Um, which is rather unfun, because it stops being a balloon chipper. And then we arrive at the wizard. The wizard always gets lightning and fireball. And then you have your Summon Phoenix on the top path. We have the Necromancer, which is, again, something that was originally from here, but they ended up with in BTD6. Um, although I would say that BTD6 one is a lot more useful. I think Pod is good. Whereas this is a little bit silly, because we summon monkeys instead of balloons, which doesn't make any sense. Where do these monkeys come from? Questions that will never be answered. And then we have Tornado on the bottom. Again, like Superstorm, but way, way cheaper. And that alt path just makes him have really strong projectiles. It's sort of like the Archmage. And then we arrive at Village. This one is quite important. So we have Camo, MIB, and Call to Arms. So that's like the sort of BTD5 thing. Um, and then the middle path is very, very different. So you get lives, and it reduces the amount of lives you lose. And then you have your monkey town for money. And then you have the strangest upgrade of them all. An upgrade that makes all of the balloons everywhere a little tiny bit slower. And if you have, can figure out what you can do with this, you can stack them on top of each other to slow the balloons down in free play, which is main use. We then have amplification. So this makes the initial two upgrades apply twice. So that's quite helpful. And this stacks with the other types of villages. So having two villagers around is always a good thing. We have the high energy beacon again from BTD5. Um, although it only shoots lightning when an ability is activated, which is a little bit sad. 
And then we have our overcharger. So this one is a little bit crazy. You activate this villager's ability, and all of the abilities in its range are fully recharged, like Striker Jones with bomb shooters. So you get everything back. And the alt path is incredibly stupid. So it makes all of the projectiles have better stats. It's like a perma brew, but it's a little bit too cheap. And the upgrade makes it do more Moab damage. And then we have probably the most bizarre upgrade in the whole game, Fission. So every projectile becomes two. So if a dart monkey shoots a dart, it shoots two now. Um, but the way these interact with spack trees is very funny and very broken. And we've got up next we have some banana farms. So the way the upgrades work in this, it's a little bit familiar, a little bit different as well. So top path takes the knowledge upgrades for getting lives from bananas, and that makes it a whole path. So we start off with getting one life for each banana, which according to the upgrades here, because it always takes the first two path, like little starter upgrades, instead of a cross path, we have nine bananas, so it's nine lives around. And I'm at grade that's 27 with the healthier bananas. And then we get an ability, which if you have a way to stall the game out, like with some regrow farming, you get endless lives with this. Which goes nicely with the bottom path. Income over time, so again, regrow farms will make this infinite money. We also have one for leaking lives, is inf infinite money. So as long as you have lives, you can get cash. Which again, like regrow farm with something you can control, and then boom, free money. And then an ability. Basically just takes the fourth tier and allows you to do it on demand. Lose lives instantly, gain a bunch of money. And then the middle path is just your standard farm. The farm gets bigger, that's all there is to it. The alt path is very uncanny. So you get money not per round, but on how many balloons are popped. It's sort of like the monkey village with the extra cash bonus. You get bananas that you have to pick up instead. And then we have a, well, sort of quite literal regrow farming upgrade. It just makes everything double. It's balloons though, not Moabs, thankfully. <coughs> and then we get an upgrade here. This does, in, I believe this increases the effect of rubber fuel. The fifth tier. But you also get an active ability that costs 10 grand to fire. And just does stupid amounts of damage. Which for bosses can be quite helpful. If you can't afford some of the more ridiculous towers, you only ever need to fire this once, and even if you run out of money, I don't believe it stops firing. So, then we have Mortar. Mortar is very different. Um, so it's still target, you still place it down. And then the middle path is your big one. Uh, although the max upgrade is an ion cannon instead of a giant nuke launching thing. It's still pretty much the same as biggest one though. Bottom path makes it shoot really quickly. And then we get a pop and all. You know, AoE stuns back. It does hit Moabs, but it doesn't do very much to them. They're mostly immune to it. And the top path. The top path is where things get very different. Effectively, Napalm puts a bunch of road spikes down wherever the blasts are going off. And then you can increase the amount of leftovers. And then the nuke is just like a giant spike pile that you can put wherever you want. Um, then we have the alt path, which is interesting in a bad way, I'd say. Um, so it just it makes it shoot ridiculously fast with tiny explosions, which then become cluster bombs. And then you have probably one of the strangest maxed upgrades of them all. Um, it's four beams that cover literally the whole map, and a big. But it does almost no damage. It's a bit strange. It's good at getting into balloons, but Moabs will just laugh at it and keep going. And we have Dartley. So the Ray of Doom is the middle path for the Dartley, as you may expect. We have the Rocket Storm is back. And then we have Bads, you know, from ET5, which does literally the same thing, except you can sort of aim it. And their rockets bounce around if they miss their targets. They usually get eaten up, which is good. And then we have the top path, which is completely different. Um, this unloader is basically what this dart tank ability is, but permanent. 
it stores up the darts from the dartling gun and chucks them out in clumps. And then we can turn those into air burst darts, like from the sun. And then we get the Golden Barrage ability, which is probably one of your best abilities for getting damage. It does very similar and comparable damage to the Banana Beam, but doesn't cost a bunch of money in doing so. Because it's very useful if you have the money for it. And then the old path is very silly. Um, you get an even bigger unloader. Um, instead of getting air burst, they just do stupid amounts of damage. And then you have basically a fusion of the unloader and the Ray of Doom. Which is both incredibly expensive and damaging. Then we have a Spike Factory. So these... You can do what you'd expect. You've got an anti mob path in the bottom, with your Spike Storm on it. The middle path is just big spikes. Um, although, ironically, the fourth tier is better than the fifth tier most of the time, but for something I'll get to much later. Perhaps in another video. And then we have the top path, which is spiky balls, spike mines, and a giant spike mine that you can put wherever you want. With an ability. And then the alt path is good for getting rid of shields. Why get rid of shields with, by attacking them when you can block the shields with your own shields? That's basically what this path is all about. Um, it bounces balloons away, and then the upgrade bounces them back even more. And then we have probably the strongest ability in the game, Lockdown. Push the Lockdown button. It covers the whole track, um, and it normally in it insta-pop anything under a MOAB. Anything surviving gets shoved right the way back around the track, and it does a lot of damage as well. Um, although it's not very strong for bosses, it definitely solves a lot of balloon problems. Although it is very, very expensive. And then we arrive at the helicopter. So the top path, funny gas. Funny gas does a lot of damage. Um, and it gets a little railgun. This railgun sadly doesn't get upgraded, but it's very good. Um, and funny gas ability just farts out more gas. Which is, uh, it's not bad. Middle path is your razor rotor, which becomes an Apache. And then the fifth tier is just an incredibly expensive super Apache. Um, and then we have the bottom path. The bottom path is probably the most useful upgrade in the whole game. The Chinook is just something that will be used a lot. Um, anything underneath the Chinook is immune to stun, and it also cleanses stun. So this is just universally helpful. Um, Nightmare mode, this thing is pretty much mandatory for getting rid of stun, and I'm having an ability that is not very good. I would never really buy this fifth tier. You press the ability, you get 10,000 lives, but when the ability ends, you keep 200 of them. It's just not very good. You know, if you want lives, just get golden fruit instead of spending like a stupid amount on some weird ability. And then the alt path. This is where the railgun does get upgraded. So we get a bigger railgun, we then get more railguns, and then if you want, you can have even more railguns, because, you know, why not? <laughs> Giant laser. It's like a ray of doom, but you get to move it around. Let me arrive at Plasmus. So this is one of the new monkeys. Um, it's very uncanny. It's very much just like the Boon Super Monkey one. It's just like a little tentacle. It bonks everything nearby. It doesn't have very much range. And it upgrades focused around more, more plasma. The middle path is damage over time, which is, um, no good. And then there's the bottom path, which hits everything. It's like Glue Striker, but for plasma. Which is interesting, but again, not very useful. And there's the top path, which is useful. You get money when it does damage. Very helpful. And these things spammed will... Now they offer an alternative to farming. Um, and then the max upgrade allows them to turn a Moab into tons of money. It's like the... Like the BMA, but if the BMA gave money, and it hits things. And then the top path... This is a bit of a meme. You get a whip, you get a punch, and then we get some very funny... Very funny upgrade. This is not practical. It's not very good, <laughs> but it's all memes. You know, Super Monkey. So the middle path, as one may expect, is a big temple. 
The temple in this is awkward to set up, but it's very strong. Um, it's also horrifyingly expensive. And this will require a fifth tier of literally everything around it to max out. So it's very expensive. And then we have the sort of Legend of the Night equivalent. So the active ability does the same thing as Legend of the Night in BTD6. You press the ability. Wounds can't leak. If they do, they just get deleted. Um, and it also produces a large amount of projectiles. So this ability has the most damage of any ability in the game when combined with this fission upgrade. And then its passive effect is you get lives. So it's an alternative, if you have the money, nice alternative to this lives path that's actually good. And then the bottom path, the bottom path is, well, it's, it's very clear that BTD6 may or may not have directly stole this path. Um, because it's a robot monkey, you get green one, uh, it doesn't have an ability, and then a red one. Like, hmm. A red super monkey with a large red ability in a sphere. I wonder why I've seen that. It's like, um, the anti-bloom is literally just a carbon copy of the Annihilator. And then the alt path is just this plasma blasts, but bigger plasma blasts. The second tier is just even bigger. And then we have a very funny upgrade that prevents birthday parties, which is a little gag from the final boss. I will not reveal. It does have a purpose, but I shall not tell just now. And that's all of our towers. So move on to other things that we've got. We have agents. So there's only five, and then an option to buy points. If for some reason you don't have enough points, you can buy more of them. Points are used to buy the upgrades. Um, you start with everything up to third tier unlocked, and then you need points to unlock the rest of the upgrades. Including the alt path ones, if you complete the quests. And then we have five agents. So a squirrel, it's like a dart monkey you can place down. If something leaks, it gets very angry and it shoots very quickly. The sprinkler is basically just a charge tower that you can put wherever you want. Um, and its ability makes it shoot really quickly. And then we have a bloomberry bush. It's like a spike factory, but single use. If it runs out of if it runs out of thorns, it goes away and it does not come back. So don't throw too many balloons at it. We have a nurse. It's like a banana farm, basically, but only lives. All you get from it, and it will also heal things from stun, which can be an alternative to the Chinook for. Nightmare mode to get rid of stun on some bosses. And then instead of a banana farmer, the banana farmer realized that being stuck in one space was overrated, so he hired a lawnmower. And now our banana farmer is a lawnmower. It'll go around, it'll pick up all your bananas, and it'll grab everything on screen. So it doesn't need to get placed next to anything, just constantly run around. Yeah, and then we have the bosses. These are all stored here. They're permanent, obviously. Got a nice collection to pick from. Notable ones include the funny laughing emoji balloon, which is definitely quite a fun surprise to play with. And then we have the permanent challenges. So, if you wondered where races came from, it's again just been taken straight out of BTDX. These work identically to races. There is a time limit here, however. You don't win within five minutes, you just lose instantly. And you can spam as many waves as you want. So, it'll be interesting to see how well you can all do, what times you'll get. Um, and we have the permanent upgrades. So we have costumes on page one. So there's funny costumes underneath all of these. And then we have the permanent upgrades on page two. So you have more lives more money at the start, and then more money later in the game. We have the funny bonus boss, um, which you can turn on and off, and then you have the cursed superstorm, which does not do what you'd expect, it is very bad. It breaks everything, including your own towers, so be warned, it is not as much fun as it may seem. And then past that we have story mode in the middle. Um, Obviously, because I've finished my playthrough of this now, I've got the final level. And these unlock at 30, 40, and 50 souls each. 
and the souls are obtained by beating up bosses. And you can progress the story. And eventually find out what the birthday party is all about. And if you want to unlock these upgrades, these permanent upgrades, you need achievements. So these are found in here. There's pretty much just one for everything you can do. All of the hidden upgrade paths, a quest, give what, a trophy. Um, most maps provide trophies when you first beat them on each difficulty, and then at certain scores and rounds you can get more of them. It takes 10 to make one token, and these upgrades are one token each. So it takes 30 tokens. No, not 30, there are 3 tokens, sorry. 30 trophies to unlock all of your upgrades. And then if that's not enough, we have missions, so it's sort of like the permanent missions in BTD5. We've got a flood, quite a crop list, solo storm, blimps, if you want just blimps. The non-stop assault, which is very interesting. And we've got the splash, which is again quite interesting. And then if you're feeling extra special, we have the prison break on various different levels. Which is um, quite the experience. Basically, these take all of the bosses in here all at the same time. And the further up you go with the prison break, the more ridiculous they get. Because like Ultra Breakout 4, it is literally this entire bounty board. All the levels of it, one after another. Which is uh, <laughs> it's quite the experience. And then we have maps, so you've got red maps, blue maps, orange maps, and if you're feeling extra adventurous, you have extreme maps down the bottom. Um, for a sort of comparison here, we have, for some reason, Tar Pits 2. If you feel extra adventurous, you can try that. There's a rather funny one with nine lanes that all go around in a circle once. Or the original sort of bloody puddles thing available, five lanes, except they're all active all the time, which is evil. We have our little, little park, river, and so on. And that's it, really. It's all the stuff that you'll find in BTDX. Hope you give it a go. Um, yeah, I might make some more videos to go over some of the alt path unlocks. But for now, that's all. I'll see you all later.